Before this video comes out, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown will become available to those who had pre-ordered uh, the deluxe edition of uh, Prince of Persia and for those who are currently uh, subscribed to the Ubisoft Plus uh, uh, like plan. So hopefully um, you'll get a chance to actually figure out, you know, you get some useful information about whether or not you want to go ahead and get Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Um, to me, like I actually had a chance to play this uh, back at PAX West in 2023. Unfortunately, I didn't get to like uh, upload my uh, footage on time uh, before that, but I did very much enjoy uh, playing um, the game and then the demo was actually pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about that and uh, yeah, talk tell you all about what I experience in the uh, the demo version of the lost crown what is prince of persia the lost crown so it is a metroidvania it's termed as a Mo metroidvania uh, platformer um and you play uh you play sargon he who is not the titular prince um you know which uh, which I'll, I'll i'll get to a little later but anyway he is your main character and he uh brandish and he uh, comes with a pair of blades Kays and layla <coughs> Excuse me. I am unfortunately sick too. I should have said talked about that. Yeah, but Kays and Layla, uh, your two blades, uh, who you use uh, that you to fight off a bunch of like uh, you know monsters and enemy enemies and uh, yeah like yeah and yeah and you also have your uh, skill. You also have your exploration skills to uh, help you uh, survive uh, through Mount K, which is where. Uh, I think that m most of the game will be uh, focused on. Uh, so, uh, so I, anyway, uh, the things I actually did like about the game. Uh, so first off, uh, I the gameplay actually works pretty dang well. It's actually rock solid for what it sets out to do. So there's a good good amount of platforming, fighting, and exploration. Uh, so like a so platforming, like uh, you, uh, you have to get Sargon to uh, get from A to B, but by you know by doing a number of different uh, mo uh, maneuvers, you gotta jump uh, to different uh, platforms, and then you gotta, uh, and then you eventually like will meet up uh, uh, against like your first you know set of enemies, and then you're gonna find like ne you know really cool like uh, ways to fight off your uh, foes. You know, just you know like uh, pressing the X button to like uh, to slash. You also have a, a number of different uh, combat abilities. You can actually uh, dodge, or you can actually do something which I really like to do. And I think that uh, the uh, developer absolutely nails it. It is parrying uh, moves. So um, you also have a, yeah. So like when you do like a regular parry. Uh, you're actually staggering the enemies a little bit. Um, you know, in the case of like a, a melee fighter, you stagger them a bit so you can get some free hits in. On um, and if you end up uh, parrying an attack that has like a gold flash on it, you actually get treated to a uh, to a really awesome uh, like execution. You know, like you know um, counter execution. Um, I don't think it's called. Yeah, I think it's called Athras. I don't know. I don't know if it's Athras. But yeah, basically your, your your charge meter, uh, so that you can unleash your abilities, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, you can either do like offensive attacks, or you can actually set up like a healing field in this demo. And I'm pretty sure that there'll be other abilities available as you play through the game. Um, so other thing, uh, so other weapons that you have, like you have like um, a couple of ranged weapons. You have uh, you have arrows, uh, your bow and arrow, and then. You have a uh, you have a bladed uh, like a disc uh, that you throw around. You throw it and it co comes back to you. I actually like so like and what is kind of interesting is that I prefer to use the blade mainly because I'm I'm patient when it comes to aiming. And so when a, when the blade becomes available, like instead of using the bow and arrow, I just like ba by default I will just throw that blade. So there is a si there are some situations where you'll be uh well you'll have to use the bow and arrow to make your way um, up different uh, platforms, which I think is pretty cool. So I think like, you know, that's just something to keep in mind when you're trying to figure out how to get past a certain area. And uh, which also like segues into like many of the different visual cues and the audio cues. So you 
you really got to pay attention to uh, what's going on in the environment so that you can advance further. And I think, I think Prince of Persia does a great job of like uh, taking advantage of uh, all these like um, you know these different cues. So well done to Ubisoft for actually like uh, putting in a lot of effort to make this uh, a fun and an enjoyable like ex experience. Okay, so. Um, the enemy variety, you know, it's yeah, it seems pretty standard so far. I mean, like I think it, uh, the demo does convey what uh, what it has available. So you have different, um, you know, en enemy varieties where like they are, uh, you have your you know your dead soldiers. Um, so they they come back from the dead and you have to fight them off. Uh, so some wield swords, others wield uh, spears, and then some are even taller than you. Uh, so there are w so you have different approaches that you use to uh, fight them off. Some of them even carry shields, so they come. So you do have to like kind of dodge and then also like um, kind of slide under, or you try to uh, you know like dash above and then come back down on them, and you know and then you know de dead. So otherwise, you can just charge up your you know, like one of your Athos abilities. I think there's a shockwave ability that's there um, and then you basically pulverize everyone that's in front of you which is pretty cool but if you are running low on health uh, and you run out of potions you can also use a level two to like start up your healing field which is like uh which i which i think adds variety to um you know your athro abilities uh that you ha uh that you have like uh late you know inside of you which is awesome i enjoyed that very much okay and then <coughs> And then lastly, um, I did appreciate uh, the uh, the effort taken into like uh, voicing the dialogue. Now, it's not the it, it is definitely not the best dialogue I've heard, but it is actually but there's a lot of effort being put in to like actually voice this dialogue. And I think like given with what they have, what I believe they have, because um, uh, I think they've actually done a pretty good job. Um, so for those who um, uh so like uh if you didn't know like the you know the the dialogue is actually fully voiced and then there's a, actually some effort like being put in places where they animate the characters and then some other places where they don't like yeah animate the, the the interactions which kind of confused me quite a bit so i was actually a little put off by that sometimes but uh then i just realized it's you know like for for the mo for now it's just a small nitpick i have right now um i i think they actually do a pretty good job with um uh with uh with like uh you know like showing you know like giving uh some personality to like different characters um and then like the artwork is really great i particularly love neith i think she's absolutely gorgeous and you know i you know i would love to like you know fight alongside her if i get the chance so yeah well done neith <laughs> Um, yeah, so other than that, like, um, you know, you, you know, the, the, your, your party isn't the only, uh, aren't the only people that you'll be talking with, like at certain points in the game, uh, you also, uh, come across like a, a demigoddess, uh, who's also like a blacksmith and then you'll come across, uh, you know, someone who has, uh, been around the temple for a while and will tell you a lot about the, uh, uh, the trees, uh, which are essentially like your place to like heal and replenish your weapon, yeah, like your, your equipment. So, and then also a place to like, um, you know, equip amulets, which will help you bolster your combat abilities. So, um, so that being said, I very much enjoyed um, all those aspects. Okay, so here's here's where so this is where we're gonna get into stuff that um, kind of like threw me off um and uh is kind of like dampened my uh, experience a bit so the title is called prince of persia so this is a game that has had um many different games and quite uh, and quite a few reboots uh you know series uh in its uh, uh lifetime so if i looked at the w so i'm looking at the wikipedia page and i see that the first game was developed in 1989 and since then they've had many different reboots and like my uh, my entry point into the you know into the franchise was back in 2008. I was a young gun, um, you know, still like uh, still hitting the books. And then when I found time, I would actually play Prince of Persia. Um, 
Yeah, and I thought this was a really fun like platformer, but then like uh, the story was something that I really didn't really care for for too much. Um, I liked Elika. I liked Elika a lot. She, I thought she was really pretty, and she was someone I wanted to like romance. Um, but anyway, that's just me. Um, I think she was just absolutely gorgeous um, back then, so and I still do. <laughs> uh, other than that, like uh, so, coming to 2023. Um, this is the first title that I found that I don't play the prince. I don't think anyone's going to play the prince. Uh, prince Hassan, who you are tasked to like save, becomes the plot point rather than the uh, the main character. So, which is um, which is kind of like a kind of screwy for me. I think they just simply use the ti- the name of the title to actually draw people back into the franchise. And I had and I actually enjoyed. Um, Prince of Persia, the 2008 version. I n- never got a chance to try out the other Prince of Persia games. So maybe at some point I will revisit. And maybe there'll be one where I don't like uh, play the prince. But this is the first time um, that I personally have encountered that um, we're not playing the prince. So that's that was kind of weird. But okay. Uh, um, so then, uh, um, and then the second thing was, um, this is a demo. So this is a demo build about. So this is going to be like everyone's first impression of what uh, you know pre- what the Lost Crown is going to offer. But will they know anything about boss encounters? Um, there's some tease that happens at the end of it, but other than that, you don't actually get to fight the boss in the demo. So for me, I thought this was a I thought this was a disappointing miss. Um, which is more importantly, I thought it was kind of confusing that they decided not to include uh, the demo boss because um, the demo boss they actually like if you 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 played fast enough in the demo back in Pax West, you actually got to fight the demo uh, boss. In which case, the demo boss um, looks like uh, I think it's like a, a manticore or a type of a beast like a scorpion tail, uh, lion body, uh, and his name is Jahandar. So Jahandar was actually quite uh, quite interesting to fight against. So he's very b- much bigger than you, and um, uh, and like a uh, and uh, you have to come with a little, you know figure out like what the attack patterns look like and where can you like uh, you know can you find the part, you know some weak spots uh, and like windows of opportunity to. Uh, to attack uh, and eventually defeat Jahandar. Now I I, I ended up getting to Jahandar, but I, unfortunately I I failed my attempt at Jahandar. Um, so uh, so while I didn't get to like a uh, you know defeat Jahandar, uh, I actually got to like uh, see like what the game has to offer, and I I very much appreciated that, and I saw that this is more than just a platform uh, combat game. Uh, I actually thought, uh, yeah, I thought that this would be a great chance to like, um, uh, you know, just to get back in the series, maybe from a different perspective. So, um, yeah, and I very much appreciated that there were going to be some boss fights uh, happening in the game, too. So and uh, yeah, so other than that, like um, going back to like where all the you know, like whether or not it's worth picking up for the game. But as I said earlier in the video, video, um, the game is going to release for those who are uh, either who bought uh, pre-ordered the deluxe edition, or are going to uh, or like um, uh, a Ubisoft Plus subscriber. Personally, uh, I think it's more worth it to just like subscribe to Ubisoft Plus and then just get your you know digital bonuses. Um, I don't know if they're going to unlock permanently if you ha- or if you just get the deluxe edition and then. Uh, and then you get to keep the uh, the pre order bonus, uh, like uh, and yeah, but basically three days uh, early access I think is honestly a joke. Um, I think it's more that they hold the game hostage, uh, like uh, for three ga- for three days for people who just buy the standard edition, which doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I feel like they're just you know like taking ten buck an additional ten bucks from people, um, and so I think like the best. You know, probably like I think like what's going on with Ubisoft is that this is the second game that I've seen where, uh, yeah, like uh, is going to be offered uh through Ubisoft Plus, and that includes the deluxe uh pre-order bo- the deluxe bonuses. So, 
uh it's so it makes me think that like the fo- the focus of like uh, ubisoft's like business now is to get people sign up for ubisoft plus uh subscriptions uh which i think like um i can see the benefits with it i think they might have seen a benefit for those who may forget to like cancel their subscriptions but i think like they ultimately offer a better deal than the standard edition i think that's what they're trying to steer you towards and um i do see that as well um uh, yeah so like um so I'm a little I'm a little wor- uh, worried. I mean, like, think for me, the only question is how badly do I want that Warriors within the skin, and that will probably like help you decide whether or not it's worth uh, pre-ordering or not. So, um, yeah. But other than that, that's uh, that's all I got to say. Otherwise, uh, the game is pretty solid. The question is, you know, like if I want to buy this game. I want to play this game. How do I get it? Like, do I want to subscribe to Ubisoft Plus, or do I just want to like just forget about the skin and just enjoy the game as is? So anyway, that's it for me. Uh, if you like what you saw here, please do feel free to uh, uh, like the video, uh, comment on what you liked or didn't like, and then uh, feel free to uh, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Hang loose.